Hello everybody and welcome once again to Galactic Science 2. So, first thing, I want to show you another tip from Zero Life. And this one is actually how to use another trick for using this thing here. So here I've got a recipe for, um, basically what I've got a recipe here for is a crescent hammer, which is in fact basically making an octetic capacitor. What he says I can do is I can drag this into here and put this in here like this, but can't change the number. So then we can update this, so we have a rough idea of what actually we're making, which is a really cool thing. I didn't know you could do that. And I tried, you can't shift to right click or anything like that. So you can put this into here like this. And that'll tell you we're going to make 64 patterns. We can't make this at the moment. Well, let's try it anyway. What was the other thing? Um, here. I think that was for a, yes, that's for a, a steel hole. Let's take and fix that as well. You put it into here. Where has it gone to? Pattern. Oops. That was an endearing one. So I put this into here like that. And then it should tell me what we've got. So really, this is just a steel hole. And I think I've got steel holes here. Let me just have a look at my. Nope, I haven't. Let's go down here. So we can take the steel hole across here and put it into this item here. So it's going to make 64. Well, we know it's not going to make 64. But at least we can update it and we roughly know what we're going to make. So, which is actually rather nice. Very good tip. Thank you very much, Zero Life. But let's put this up there. So actually, when we do have one of those, we just have to come along and fix the recipe. Now today I want to do something that's a little bit mathematically complicated. Let's have a look at what we've got. First of all, what I want to do is I want to do some automation of um, alloy mixing. And the alloy mixers I want to do are basically the energetic alloy and the vibrant alloy from Ender IO. Now let's have a look at the recipes for those to start with. I've got energetic and I haven't got vibrant. Right, here we go. Now, here we are, energetic alloy. You make that, well, the way we're going to make that, we, we can't do it in this alloy smelter because we can't build one. We can't do it in the casting table because we can't build a, a Tinker's Construct stuff or very much. Now, we can do it in the metal caster. And here are two recipes. The first recipe is here, liquid energetic alloy. And the second recipe is molten energetic alloy. And the, the molten and the liquid are the important bits. Now, liquid is 108 millibuckets, which in fact, mathematically, is 9 times 12. So one nugget would be 12 millibuckets. This one here is 9 times 16. So one, milli, so one nugget would be 16 millibuckets. Okay, that's just important to remember. Here we've got liquid energetic. Now you make that from smelting, obviously smelting it in itself into the industrial crucible furnace. So when one ingot would produce 108 millibuckets of energetic alloy. But the way we want to do it, would the best way would be this way. So you've got liquid gold, energized glowstone, and unfortunately we've got liquid redstone. And we don't have a recipe for liquid redstone, but we should have. In fact, it should be in here with redstone and dust. You should be able to make liquid redstone and the reason why it's good is because you can do it <laughs> cleanly so here we have 125 millibuckets of energized glowstone now one glowstone will produce 250 so it's exactly half so you'd get double this quantity which means you'd get uh, 108 which would be one ingot's worth liquid redstone i guess would be the same and the same for gold so you'd need 108 gold which would produce two. So with two, twice that, twice that, twice that would give you two, a whole ingot, which is what this perfect recipe actually. Now the other one here is this one. A destabilized redstone. Oh, but this is 50. Oh, okay, we can do it. Great. I Last time I looked, I couldn't find this recipe. So we can basically do it. Destabilized redstone, that's half of one dust. 
and liquid gold that's half of one ingot great so we can do it fantastic and that's half of one glowstone perfect and that'll produce one liquid energetically great i was going to show you the other recipe here using molten energetic alloy one ingot of molten will give you 144 millibuckets in fact it actually writes it down here in the magna crucible and that's the difference same thing here in all of the cases actually it's 144 so it'd be 16 and that's obviously nine times as much and here is where it actually becomes impossible because this is, this is actually one quarter but it's if it's a properly a quarter it'd be 62.5 and this is a again one quarter 25 and this is 48 which in fact if you look at this as liquid gold this is actually incorrect because that's actually three nuggets if we go to the second page here this is molten gold now they're the wrong way around because they're basically three nuggets three twelves is 36 this one is three twelves is 48 anyway right so we're going to go and we're going to make the other one with liquid gold so what we need for that we need an industrial crucible furnace and an alloy mixer and now to pipe the stuff we're going to use hardened fluid ducts because it doesn't work with the ender io i can't pump it out with ender io so let's see if we can go and do this have i got some gold with me i want some gold redstone and glowstone i've got some redstone gold and glowstone up here perfect i'm not in that order mind you but there we are so what i'm going to do is set it down here in fact i've got a metal caster and an induction crucible furnace here so i'm going to set the same thing up and we need basically three of these industrial crucible furnaces connecting to a alloy, alloy mixer like that and we can at the back these will be connected across but this isn't actually not very nice at the moment because I ref it'd be better for them to go underneath we'll see why in a second so now we can actually pipe these together so let's do that we'll do one at a time so i've got six signal and servos in here and plenty of 24 hardened fluid ducts so we'll put this down here and here so the first thing we needed was liquid gold so we take one ingot of gold here that'll get in here and it's not gone anywhere yet it's still in here we get, should have 108 millibuckets of gold it doesn't show up so all we need to do now is to, to pipe this out of here and then pump it into the to the alloy mix so let's just activate that and you saw it just flash across there and there we have 108 millibuckets of gold next one was liquid redstone all destabilized redstone i saw the recipe so we'll do the same thing i'll put down a item uh, fluid duct here we'll put in one redstone and that should give us 100 millibuckets of destabilized redstone i'll put the connector on here like this servo on and activate it and you see that disappears out so the next slot here has got 100 so the last one we're going to do is is glowstone actually i do need that in there that's right click that and put one glowstone in there that gets across melted 250 which is exactly twice 125 put this down here and put the put the servo on it and activate the servo and you see that's gone across so now we should have one ingots worth of that's 126 that isn't quite right is it 50, 50 12 and 72 the reason it's not right is because there's liquid gold and this is where it's gone slightly wrong it should really be molten gold that would do and they would have been correct so we could put another ingot of gold in there that comes across this time we've got 72 120 50 destabilized redstone 126 energized glowstone I think somebody's maths has gone wrong here so what are we short of liquid gold you know i'm confused let me double check this recipe again i want the liquid one where's the liquid one 
liquid energetic alloy. Alloy mixer. 54 millibuckets of gold. Liquid gold. No, that's the wrong one. I need this one. 54 millibuckets of liquid gold. Destabilized redstone. And 125 energized glowstone to produce 54 energetic alloy. Wow. Uh, something's not working because <laughs> that is correct if I'm not mistaken and we get our molten energetic alloy and that should be one thing that's worth knowing it's not so there's a problem with this so let's just finish it off anyway let's show all the gold in there all the redstone in here and all of the glowstone in here and see what we end up getting in here see that's going up nicely now too Destabilized redstone has not yet come across. Why not? Ah, because this is full of gold. Uh huh. Do you know, I hadn't thought of that. So that's why it's bad having the cables on the other side, by the way, as well. So let's, um, let's get rid of, let's, we'll have to put it this way around. What have we got in this pipe? I think this will be gold, because that was the fastest one to, to smelt. So let's put this down here. I can't break it until they've got everything out of the way, by the way. So there we are. So we'll turn that one off because we don't want anything coming from here. Or going into that one. I will just put this one down here like that. Activate that. That pushes the redstone in. So now we're short of glowstone. Um, and the only way I can do glowstone is through here. So I'm going to have to break this and go underneath with these pipes, uh, with this cable. So let's just do that. Well, it is actually the first time I've tried this, so you'll see why it doesn't always work as I hope. So let's just let's bring everything down here and bring it all underneath. We should be able to get underneath all of these blocks somehow or other. I'm going to go back a little bit here. Can I reach that one? Yes, I can. Good. So now I should need some cables, which I've got here. Let's put those down. Slot four, if I was going to type. Like that. In fact, because there's no reason why we can't go underneath here as well. I'll take that one off there. Bring that one down there. And then we can just take this across down like that. Then everything should connect up. Ah, yes, I see. That's why I didn't do it that way. But that's no problem. We can move these. There's nothing in here at the moment. So let's get rid of these. That was going the other direction, by the way. So we just need the, the cable to come down through here. Like that. They should all be connected up. Great, they are. So we just come across one more here and then connect into that this one I think would probably be a sensible a sensible route can I get that onto that yes I can good and then we can put these bits of mint down here filling in this nicely and then we could route that as, as we wanted it to so that's all connected up good so we need the last one of these, which would have to be, uh, unfortunately, it has to be glowstone. So it's got to bring the glowstone from here. And it'll probably want to connect up everywhere. Oh, it didn't. Okay, good. Like that, and then just put the servo on here. And there we've got our three path. And I can then remove the servos from here. So we should have in here plenty of molten. This is strange. It worked first time and it hasn't worked since then. I don't understand that at all. Well, I suspect it's a bug. And I suspect it should work as I have done it. There's nothing in this. Double check this. There's nothing in here. That's empty. And it is glowstone, destabilized redstone, and liquid gold. It should produce molten energetic. Hmm. 
There's nothing to do with signals coming on or off. Well, that's a puzzle. And I don't know what to do about that for the time being. Let's just take this out of what we've got in here out. So let's go and get the refractorized block. Hmm. In fact, they're stored in this chest over here, aren't they? We've got six in there, so that's plenty to remove the stuff that we've got. Yeah, it's a very strange, a very strange effect that one because it's worked part of the time. What did I just do then? All right, click this. I've got 50 million buckets of energetic. Oh, okay, interesting. Didn't realize that actually worked like that. So. Don't ask me what's going on here. Why is that not coming into here? I do not know. What would also be nice is this. Let's go and do this as well. Let's take a few of these down here. I don't think this works, but it'd be really good if it did. I think you can only use these slots with the factory stuff. Oh, it's working fantastic. So those should all fill up and then we can take the materials out but why it's not working i do not know because the recipes in the alloy mixer should work so we'll see if we can find that recipe there was liquid redstone liquid silver well that makes signal them and i guess that's the liquid signal them. yes that's the same what's this one aluminum energetic gold liquid redstone and energized glowstone that's all we can't make but this is the same recipe and it should produce liquid energetic a liquid energetic what did i end up with molten energetic oh well, that's very strange as well isn't it what have we got here molten energetic well something's going very strange in here molten molten now i've got molten so that's not working correctly is it because we should be ending up with liquid energetic. Anyway, I think these are all now empty. Good, they are. And that means I can then remove from here these. So that would be working as you want it to work. But it didn't work. And that's very strange because I'm sure that should work. So I will report that as a bug because it's not right. So the next thing, I went to Mars. Between times, I went to Mars. What I've done also here, while I'm doing the episode, I've removed from here this this crafting card, so the the crafting is not happening at the same time as I'm making the video. And the reason for that is, um, it will it causes quite a lot of lag when I'm doing that. It's not too bad at the moment. So when it's crafting, it's got quite a lot of lag in there. So what can we do here? that's energized closed end and that's liquid steel and that's empty I'll tell you what we'll do we'll put those three metals we've just got here into here like this i don't think there's anything oh yes i wanted oil in there didn't i and instead we'll put that's liquid gold yeah that's fantastic so i can put the liquid gold on here i can put the energetic glowstone in if i put it in don't think it works i'll put it like that because it doesn't quite get all of it oops just try that again do it one higher see there's always a little drop left so what you need to do is to break the the tank above it like this and this one and then put the liquid gold one here like that oh sorry the energized glowstone one there and this is a destabilized redstone so we'll do the same thing with this like that this one here i also brought in and this was liquefacted coal and i don't think i've got any uses for it except for to put it into a bucket and then you only get you in the earlier version you could get 200 um i think it, i can't remember what it was 200 energy wise you got quite a lot the, he, he brought it down to a, a much lower level a tenth of what it is but also 
if I look at liquefactor coal here, let's have a look at that while I'm talking about this, so you know what I'm talking about. So that didn't work, let's try. Fracted coal. What have we got here? Rocket fuel. Probably spelled it wrong. Let's look for coal. Here we go. Liquefracted coal. And if you right, right click on this, there's basically, uh, right click on it. It's only uses to make steel in the smelter. Can you do that in the LA mixer? And the metal atomizer will reverse it to coal dust with water. That's it. And if you put it in a bucket like this, obviously you can smelt it in. That's how the Hold on, try again, right click it. So you can try fluid transpose it. You can smelt it again to smelt and steel with the right stuff. Metal and tires on it. And here's where it goes wrong. This is where before you used to get 200 carbon in the chemical decomposer, but you're not getting the, the metal back, which is actually rather odd. Because normally when you do, there's, there's too many recipes to go through here, but a bucket of anything, let's take, Molten energetic alloy. Right click that. Can we decompose this? No, we can't. But normally, with a bucket of anything, when you do it, you get your 48 millibuckets of iron back again in order to make your. Sorry, you get three ingots worth. Yeah, that's 48 millibuckets, isn't it? I think. Of gold. Uh, of iron back again. So that's also a little bit broken. But it's not got much use. So they're the getting a 200 carbon you used to get, which is actually quite good because that was a good way to power your um, uh, sterling generators here. In fact, as, as you can see here, I've actually added another one. And the reason I've added another one is because I was running out of power. At the moment, it's going up. So that's fine. What I've got to do next is the <laughs> reason for doing this, of course was to get some blocks of energetic um, alloy and vibrant alloy so I could make the capacitors. But uh, I've got to think about that again, because doing it manually is a pain. But, and you need a lot of it. So, unfortunately, Kathleen at the moment is sick, I believe. So that puts, uh, that breaks that one. So anyway, what I'd like to do, see if we can do this now. Oh uh, yes. I removed from here, the storage bus and the reason I removed the storage bus let's put this back in again here like this where's my crafting card here it'll start to craft again and it should actually start to craft machine parts we can go and check that in here yeah it's now crafting machine parts that's the only thing it's crafting but if I put a storage bus on there, it actually stops it to working again. So let's just put a storage bus on there, because that might actually even be better. You'll find it's got, at the moment, it's got 32, so it'll make 33 and stop, I think. So what we wanted to make was a, another mesh steel hole, wasn't it? So let's see if we can actually make a steel hull. So we're short of dash ingots. We're missing 176. Now I went to Mars and I actually got the, the thing to work properly. Oh, I'm nearly there. That's a shame. That's, we're very close to being able to do one steel hull. So let's put these into here and smelt these down. I should really, one thing I was planning to do also was to was to put the redstone furnace down. I think we'll do that now actually, because we've got a little bit of time in this episode. Pulverizer, I think I put it where, have I got it on my still? Yes, I have, good. And actually if I maximize this one up. 
So it doesn't matter where we put it, we'll put it somewhere where we can access the AE2 stuff. Maybe here's a good place because there's a cable there as well. So let's just take the, yeah, that'll be a perfect place. Look at that. We can take that out of there. We can put a cable down here. Power cable, we actually need to put down two because I need to put it on this block, don't I? So then I can put the redstone furnace in the back here like that. So that will get power. Good, it's getting power. And the configuration is basically, I well, augmentation, I maximize the speed of that. So we should be able to put into here some dash ingots. I won't use them all up because we'll set up a recipe for that. So here we're going to do um, import on the top and export at the back because that's the way I always think, try to do it. So we need basically an import bus at the back like that. And we need an export bus on the top like that. And what we want to export is, well, at the moment we want to export. No, I want an interface bus on here, don't I? An ME interface would be much nicer. And I think I've got some ME interfaces around. If not, I shall quickly. Yes, I've got plenty. I made some. I made some for the fluid storage buses, actually. 27. Just take one of those and make it a flat version. I'll put it down here like that. We'll come along here and we should simply go to the configuration and shift click the middle. That turns off everything. So the back we want to be an output, and the top we want to be an input. That'll, be, that'll just do fine. So we can then basically cable this up. Like, I think this would be a good place. It'll probably connect to something I don't want it to connect to, but there we are. Yep, as I thought. In fact, if I don't want it to connect to that, I'll just put down an anchor. But for the time being, it's fine. So what we now need is a recipe to make dash ingots from dash. So let's go and do that. Raw dash. So clear this recipe off here. So we want one of these. We'll make one dash ingot. I've got three more. That's great. I think we might even be able to do it. Let's go and put this down in that recipe in that ME interface. And put in here a crafting card. So that it will automatically craft. Do I need to do that? No, I probably don't actually. Let's leave it off and see if it works without it. So, I also need to get this dash that I've processed in here. So. Otherwise, because that's in my ad hoc place, it's not, it's deliberately not going into the system in here, so. Let's do that. So my small quarry produced quite a reasonable amount of dish. Uh, but I had to go and do something tweaky to it. Or well, maybe we'll have a look at that next time. So let's try again doing one steel hull. We're short of 15 dash, but it should be able to craft ingots. So I'm going to have to wait until I get a some more dash in here. Have we got any more dash coming in? 70. I think we're going to wait till that gets to 85, unless I've put it somewhere else. I don't think I have. Oh yes, I might have done actually, because that filled up, didn't it? And it, I oh, know it should have come out. I thought I put more in than 15. No. Nah. Export bus. Well, I'm going to have to wait. There's nothing else I can do for it in the moment. Well, there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Learned something, because I have. And I'll report a bug on it, So, because we are only beta pack, so it's not so bad. But anyway, I wish you all the best. And I'll see you next time. And again, thank you for your tips. They're very helpful.